You may know Cinco de Mayo here in the United States as a fun, festive holiday. But what you may not know is that the holiday is little celebrated in Mexico. Why? Well, it's the day that marks the only victory by Mexican forces in a battle that took place in Puebla in 1862. But the war, the Franco-Mexican War, was eventually lost by Mexico. Simply put, Cinco de Mayo is not that big a deal in Mexico. So my way of celebrating Cinco de Mayo is the cooking of Puebla's most classic dish, tinga poblana. Though it's classically made with pork, today it's going to be tacos of chicken tinga poblana. One of the most important ingredients in making any tinga is caramelized onions, and it's a good amount of onions. So I am slicing up this white onion right here in pieces that are a little smaller than a half an inch. To me, that's what makes a good taco is when everything is in the right size pieces. Okay, so now I'm going to put olive oil in here. You can do vegetable oil. Um, in Puebla, they love to cook with uh, with the fresh rendered pork lard um, and you want enough to generously coat the bottom of the pan and I'm going to get these guys started. I'm over medium high heat here and we want them to soften and they're going to get just a little bit of color. Now let's go on to the chicken that's going to go in here. I'm working with boneless skinless thick chicken thighs and I'm going to cut those into pieces again that are a little bit smaller than a half an inch. Um, it's just easier to make the tacos out of pieces that are a little bit smaller. They don't fall out of the, the tortillas when you make them into slightly smaller pieces. Okay, and I'm going to cut all the way through all of these four ones. This is about a pound of meat that I'm working with right here. Okay, these onions are starting to brown now. They're certainly softened up. I'm going to slide all of this chicken into the pan and then I'm going to nestle it down into the skillet so that it can start to brown as well. Remember, we're still working kind of over, not kind of, we are working over a medium high heat here. So this will go pretty fast. But when I say nestle it down, so it's most of it is touching the bottom and in a single layer. It's not stacked up. That's the reason I'm working with this 12 inch skillet. Um, the, not only does the cast iron uh, really hold and distribute heat well, but at the same time, you've got all the space you need in a 12 inch to be able to get that contact. Now you can hear the chicken really starting to cook, but I want to get some brown. Brown always equals flavor. If you only get a really light color on it, you won't have the same richness. People are always asking me, what's the difference between the way restaurant uh, chefs cook and the way home cooks cook? Mostly about heat. The restaurant chefs will utilize the higher heat to get the brown flavor so that everything tastes better. I'm just going to let this cook undisturbed till I'm sure that I've got some nice browning going on. Okay, let's go dive in here and see if we've got some nice color. That's about what I'm looking for. You can see that this chicken has cooked almost completely on one side um, because we've lost the, the pink on the top. And so it'll be perfectly cooked. I'm using thighs here, which can take a little bit more heat than the chicken breasts, which dry out quite quickly. So now we've got all this beautiful browning going on here. I'm going to throw in some garlic that I've chopped up here. This is three cloves of garlic. So just sprinkle that over the top of all of this. And we'll stir that for about a minute while we blend up a can of fire roasted tomatoes. I'll tell you that when you make chicken tinga tacos, it's such an incredible crowd pleaser. Everybody just really loves it. I can smell that garlic. So we're going to blend this 15 ounce can 
of, I always call them 15 ounce cans, though I know that they have gone to being 14 and a half ounce cans now. I want a coarse puree out of this, so it really won't take very much time at all. They're pretty soft, so that will be enough on that. I'll get this top, very tight fitting top off of here, and we'll put this in here. Now, fire roasted tomatoes are my choice here. People in Puebla tend to work with fresh tomatoes that they will roast. And so you get a sweeter flavor out of them. And that's exactly what you'll get out of the fire roasted tomatoes in the can. Maybe not quite as good as the real ripe tomatoes that are fresh and roasted. So we're going to let this start um, simmering down. It's got to come to a sort of thickness that we can make a taco out of it. Um, I'm going to put about a teaspoon of Mexican oregano in this whole leaf. If you buy it at the Mexican grocery store, it will be in whole leaf um, style. Then so you'll have to um, crush it between your palms, which is one of my favorite things to do, not just because the oregano tastes better when freshly crushed, but also that smell is just unbelievable. It doesn't smell like Mediterranean oregano at all. It's got a, what I would call a slightly grassier kind of flavor. Now the defining flavor, well, one of the defining flavors, I will say, that Mexican oregano is such a defining flavor for making a great tinga. But the other defining flavor is the chipotles. So we have two options for you. One's the very easy one. You buy the, um, the canned chipotles in the regular grocery store, or the Mexican grocery store, or what they would do in Puebla is to use these pickled moritas slash chipotles. Um, in, in Puebla, they call them chipotles. The rest of the country, they call them moritas. And I'm gonna pick out a few of these guys. Um, maybe four of them will probably be enough, but this will be to your taste. So these are the sweet and sour pickled moritas chipotles. And I'm going to cut them. I'm not going to seed them. I'm going to let the seeds stay in them for this. And these are going to have a tangy, sweet, smoky, and spicy flavor. So if you think about all those flavors, that's the perfect description for a good barbecue sauce, right? <laughs> and so people that like barbecue tend to love this dish. <clears throat> and especially when it is made from the pickled moritas. So we've got those guys. So if, if you want to take the seeds out, you can feel free to do that. A lot of the small chilies in Mexico do not get seeded unless you're working with a very fussy cook. But I tend to go for the little more gutsy way of doing things when it's going to be for tacos. Um, so we'll mix all of those guys in. And we'll let them simmer. We're almost to where we need to be. I'm going to go ahead and season it now. I'm going to start off with a teaspoon of salt, which is my guess is where I'm going to end up. Um, but then we can add a little bit more. But I know it's going to take a teaspoon of salt to go over this. And then I will give this a taste after I mix that salt in there. There's not enough. Oh, by the way, if you're going to not be using the sweet and sour pickled chipotles for this, you will go anywhere from two to four of the canned ones. And maybe you want to put a little bit of that canning liquid. It's a vinegary tomato sauce on that. And it's very welcome in this dish as well. Okay, let me give it a taste. Mm. We hit it. Mm. And that spice from the sweet and sour pickled chipotles is just spectacular. I'm going to give this another minute and then we'll make tacos. Okay, time to build tacos now. Um, I get really excited about these and I think you will too. This also makes a really great filling for a torta if you're looking for something like that. So I'm going to put a, a spoonful of our finished tinga on each of the warm corn tortillas here. And then I'm gonna put a slice of avocado. There are very classic 
garnishes that go on tinga. Uh, one of them is avocados. I just cut the slice of the avocado out of the whole avocado and then peeled the and peeled the skin right off of that. Next thing that we have here is a little bit of queso fresco to go over the top of it. These are also good with a little bit of fresh goat cheese sprinkled over the top of them. I like to put cilantro on there. If you were in, in Puebla, they may tell you papalo quelite is the thing to put on top of it, but that's like cilantro on steroids. So I just go for a little bit of cilantro here. And for me, that is the dish.